Oh, there are multiple challenges. Uh, we'll start with the clinician. So when the physician comes in to see the patient, there is so much data that's out there and depending upon the environment the physician is seeing the patient also dictates some of this. So a physician that has to know every single tumor type in no way is going to be able to keep up with all the massive data and the studies and everything that is coming out for every single tumor type. So keeping up with the data, integrating it, being able to actually teach the patient about it and implement it is one of the great challenges that is out there. Um, other challenges are, you know, who should we be testing with this? What tests should we be doing? And, you know, keeping the physician up to date with that. Um, on the patient's end of things, uh, their willingness to do some of the precision techniques because they do take time. And also, on, on, you know, their expectations may be somewhat unrealistic. Um, things that you have to worry about as a patient says, oh great, I have this, you know, um, mutation, I should be actually responding to X therapy or perhaps my, t uh, my tumor proportion score of PDL1 is 80, I should have a great response to one of the checkpoint inhibitors and in fact they don't. Studies have shown in most of these agents, um, response rates are somewhere in about 50 percentile, maybe 54 percentile. A couple actually go up into the 60 to 70 percentile, but not everybody who should respond is responding. So the expectations can be unrealistic on both the clinicians and the patients. Uh, standpoint. Now, as far as testing, that's a whole nother ball of wax. <laughs> you know, we start out with how do we identify the patients that should be being tested, and how do we identify of those patients who should be being, who should be getting treatment, who shouldn't. One of the early examples of this is the Oncotype DX, which is used in breast cancer to determine patients who have undergone surgery with ER positivity, who should be getting it of chemotherapy. Well, that's only one example. How do we pick out other patients who should be being treated and who shouldn't be being treated? Another example would be how do we pick out who is going to respond? What tests should we be doing? Should they be immunohistochemistry? Should they be, you know, um, a fish type testing? Should it be something along the lines of next generation sequencing? Nobody really knows the answer to that. And, you know, there's standardization issues. Um, other issues that occur are what toxicity uh, tests should we be doing? Other things could include, you know, who should be being tested for germline mutations. We usually determine that if a patient comes in and has many of their family members affected by cancer, but those are the only patients that right now we're recommending having germline testing. Are there other families that we're missing? Are there germline mutations we really don't know about yet? So I think overall it's a very complicated situation and really determining which patients should get what tests and um, as to what patients should get what tests is, is complicated. Now, when we get to treatment, what are the actual treatments we should be having? Some of it has been well worked out, a lot of it hasn't been. And the other thing is we need to have well-developed um, molecularly marker-driven um, clinical studies to actually be enrolled on for the patients, or for the patients to be enrolled on. Also, the other thing are the master protocols and getting patients to participate in that. And then what about those ever-loving non-responders? What do we do about them? How do we figure out what the heck is going on with them? So overall, it's a very complicated and complex problem.